How do you want to die? A single shot or piece by piece with an axe? From the 13th to the 12th, 95. Three drug barons executed in a country lane were offered a chilling choice of how they died. Blasted through the head with a shotgun or hacked to pieces with an axe. Patrick Tate, Tony Tucker and Craig Rolf opted for the gun. They were found dead in their Range Rover after a volley of blasts from pump action weapons. The gangster's last seconds were outlined yesterday by former associate Steve Nipper Ellis, who was quizzed by police over an unsuccessful bid to murder 18 stone Muslim Tate a year ago. Ellis 30 said, They were given two options. They could be taken apart with an axe, starting with their fingers, moving onto their hands and then their legs, or they could opt for the quick way out. An execution, shot through the back of the head. They were told, either way, you're going to get it. There's no escape. Tucker and Tate messed their trousers first, then took the shots. Tate, 37, was executed with two blasts to the head and one in the chest in the back of the car. Tucker, 38, and henchman Rolf, 26, were slumped in the front seats with the brains blown out. Ellis, dubbed Nipper, because he's just 5 foot 5 inches, confirmed the three were lured to the snow-covered farm track in Retterdon, Essex, with the promise of another drugs deal. They had double-crossed too many people, They'd made too many enemies. They often went to their meets, snatched the supplies and beat up the suppliers. But they did it once too often and were set up themselves. Detectives believe the thugs were driven from the rendezvous spot to the murder scene at gunpoint then ambushed by at least two other gunmen. Ellis, who has a string of convictions, is a suspect for the triple murder because of his arrest for the early attempt on Tate's life. He said, It wasn't me who did the shooting. I just know what happened from a very reliable source but I'd love to shake the hand of the man who did it. He's my hero, and I will regret to my dying days that I would not take the credit for it. The first attempt to kill Tate came at his £250,000 bungalow in Basildon, Essex a year ago. A brick was thrown through the toilet window whilst Tate was in it. When he peered outside, a gunman opened fire with a revolver from close range. Tate raised his arm to shield his face. The bullet hit him in the wrist, travelled up his arm and smashed bones in his elbow. Ellis who had fallen out with Tate and Tucker said, Tate identified me as the gunman, and Tucker and Rolf told police had chased him with a pump action shotgun. I was arrested, but the case was never pursued because Chex ruled out my gun as the weapon, but Pat Tate was 100% sure it was me, and he swore revenge. Ellis told how he fell out with Tucker and Tate late last year. He said it was all over some silly remark I made on the phone. Next thing, I knew Tucker and Rolf came round to my house in Essex. Tucker stuck a loaded pistol into my temple, and threatened to kill me. Then they came after me with a machete and threatened to hack off my hand and foot. Then they looted my house and left their filth plastered all over the stuff they left behind. I couldn't take any more of it. Went out and bought a Smith & Weston for £600 and a bulletproof vest for 400 I might be small, but someone had to stand up to them. Ellis told how after the attempt on Tate's life he was invited to meet Tate in hospital to sort out a misunderstanding. But he found out that Tate had a gun hidden into his hospital bed and was planning to execute Ellis as he stepped through the door. Tate was later jailed for smuggling the weapon into the hospital. Ellis has been lying low in the West Country since August after serving seven and a half months for illegally possessing firearms. Wearing sunglasses to disguise his identity, he said, When I was in jail, I had numerous death threats. On one occasion, two men came up to me and told me a £10,000 contract had been put out on me. As soon as I got out of prison, I was ordered to leave town. I was told if I ignored the warnings, they would retaliate. A hitman went to my dad's door looking for me. My family were told that Tucker and Tate planned to snatch my little sister and take off her fingers one by one. She's only 15 and terrified. The threats never stopped and the last one was only two weeks ago. These people were nasty, vicious bullies. They will not be missed. They were scum and Britain is a better place without them. My dad was crying tears of joy when he heard they'd been murdered. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley, who was in charge of the triple murder investigation, last night asked the son to put him in touch with Ellis. He said, Because of the previous incident, it is in our interest and his to eliminate him from the inquiry. Fears of reprisal on drug killings Top Essex detective warned yesterday there could be reprisals after the slaughter of three suspected drug dealers. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley said after the inquest opened on the free, I think there is a real chance that there could be repercussions. The killings 
that left a vacuum in the drugs distribution network in the county. It will be filled very quickly because there is big money to be made. Mr Dibley said, I believe the criminal fraternity in Essex now looking over their shoulders. The three who died, Anthony Tucker, 38, Craig Rolfe, 26 from Chafford 100 and Patrick Tate, 37 from Basildon were found in Rolfe's Range Rover last Thursday. It was parked in a farm lane at Retterdon near Chelmsford. All had been shot at close range the evening before. The killer used a sawn-off double-barreled 12 ball shotgun. Mr Dibley said the gun would have only been six inches away from each man when it was fired. The weapon has not been found and he admitted the chances of finding it were now slim. We're in contact with other forces who have had drugs-related killings. Certainly nowhere else in the country has seen three people killed in this way. Detectives believe that whoever killed the three was in the Range Rover with them. Mr Dibley said the killer must have been very cool to act as he did. It was likely that a second vehicle driven by an accomplice must have been near the scene. At the inquest, which was opened and adjourned to a date to be fixed, coroner's officer PC Derrick Swell said all three men had been identified by fingerprints. A post-mortem examination carried out by Home Office pathologist Dr Paula Lanus revealed that Tate died from multiple shotgun wounds and the other two died from shotgun wounds to the head. At least eight cartridges were discharged from the gun. Mr Dibley said the shots would have been fired very quickly. It is believed each of the victims was shot once, then the killer fired again to finish them off. At the inquest, coroner Dr Malcolm Weir said although the victims were somewhat unsavoury, they were human. Mr Dibley told him, We are going all out to identify the person responsible. A lot of people would say no one is going to miss them, but the person who has done this to these three people is in some ways worse than them. Society demands that I investigate this as thoroughly as possible to bring whoever is responsible to justice.